Hello, Sunday schoolers. Look where I am today. I'm by the sea. Guess who I've got with me? Hey, Sammy. Are you having fun? Yeah. Do you like the sea? Yeah. Should we go and have a paddle? Oh, come on, Sammy. Come in the sea. It is a little bit cold, but you'll be fine. Oh, my feet. They're a little bit cold. They're a little bit sunburnt. But they're, oh, it's nice to have the water around your toes. Oh, come on, Sammy. Sammy, don't be such a wuss. Poor Sammy. He didn't want to go in the water. It was cold, I know. Well, we'll come back tomorrow when it would be a bit warmer. Yeah, we'll try it then. So I am back on the rocks. Can you see? And so I've had to put my shoes back on because you don't want to be walking over the rocks with, with bare feet. So it's important to know when to have your shoes on and when not to have your shoes on when you're on the beach, isn't it? Yeah. But we're going to go back to the caravan now. Okay. And then we'll, um, we'll check back in with you guys. But in the meantime, right, you're going to listen to a song. I'm going to have a video with a song and it's called Nothing is Impossible. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at some people from the Bible, yeah, who had really amazing experiences with God, which showed them that nothing is impossible with God. And we sign off with Moses. So it's a, it's a story we've looked at already. So it'll be familiar to you, but we're going to look at a different bit of it this week. OK, so you watch this video and then we'll see you when we get back to the caravan.
we were back in the caravan. Yeah, we've had a lovely time at the beach, haven't we? Even though you didn't go in the water. No, but we might go tomorrow again. Yeah, and have another go. Might be a bit warmer. So I said we were going to talk a bit more about Moses again. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the story of Moses? Now, Moses was uh, a Hebrew, wasn't he? And he was born when the Hebrew people were living as slaves in a place called Egypt. Yeah. Now, the Egyptian king, he was a little bit worried about how many of the Hebrews there were living in his country. He was called Fairy. No, no, he was called Pharaoh. Yeah. Very close, though. Good, wasn't he? Remembered that. But he was called Pharaoh. And Pharaoh decided that because there were too many Hebrews to his mind, he was going to cut down on the number in some way. And his way of doing that was to say that when there was a baby boy that was born, they had to be killed. <gasps> I know, awful, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Moses was born to his mummy and daddy and his mummy decided that wasn't going to happen to her little boy. So what she did was she made a special basket. Yeah, do you remember this bit? Yeah, a special basket. And she made it so that it was waterproof. And she put baby Moses inside and then they took took Moses down to the river and they popped him in the basket in the bulrushes at the side of the river. And then Moses' big sister called Miriam, yeah, she waited and watched to see what would happen. Mm, now what did happen? Pharaoh's daughter came, yes. Why did she come to the river? Because the shower was working wasn't working in the palace. No, they didn't have bathrooms in those days. No, 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 they didn't. I know, shocking. And Pharaoh's daughter would go and bathe. Yeah, she would go and have her bath down at the, at the river. Now, she went there one day with all her ladies in waiting to go and have her bath with her bubble bath, yes, and her special talcum powder, yes, all of that, yeah. She went down to the river to have a bath and because she spotted the basket. And she told one of her ladies, go and see what's in that basket. And she found, what did she find? That baby. She found the baby and she was like, oh, this poor baby. I will take the baby back to the palace and I will look after the baby myself. But she was a princess, yeah, and they didn't do anything by themselves. So she needed a nurse to help her look after the baby. So Miriam ran out from where she was hiding and went, I know somebody that can help you look after the baby. And she went back and got her own mum. So her mummy was able to look after Moses herself, even though he was growing up in the palace. Now, one day when he was grown up, he went to a place where the Hebrew slaves were working because he knew he, he wasn't an Egyptian. He knew he was a Hebrew and he went to see his people and he saw one of the Egyptian guards. They He was beating the Hebrew slave that wasn't working hard enough. And Moses got very, very angry and he had a fight with the Egyptian. And in that fight, the Egyptian was killed. Oh, oh, what was Moses going to do? He quickly hid the body in the sand and then he ran away and he ran out into the desert. And when he was out in the desert, he met a priest, a priest from his own family's religion, a priest of God, because Egyptians had a different religion, you see. And he met a priest of his God and that priest said, well, come back and live with me. And so Moses lived with the priest and his family out there in the desert and he worked looking after the sheep. And one day, this happened. Here I am. 
Take the sandals from your feet. For the place on which you stand is holy ground. God of your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What do you want with me? I have seen the oppression of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry. Stop it! Leave that man alone! So I have come down to deliver them out of slavery and bring them to a good land. And so, unto Pharaoh, I shall send you. Me? Who am I to lead these people? They'll never believe me. They won't even listen. I shall teach you what to say. Let my people go! But I was their enemy. I was the prince of Egypt, the son of the man who slaughtered their children. You've, you've chosen the wrong messenger. How, how can I even speak to these people? Who made man's mouth? Who made the deaf, the mute, the seeing, or the blind? Did not I? Now go! Imagine if that happened to you. <gasps> and, and did you notice how God told Moses to take his sandals off so that he was walking barefoot? Now, that was something that people used to do back in those days when they thought they were walking on holy ground. It, it was a way of kind of showing respect. Remember, I had to take my shoes off to go in the water, didn't I? And then I put them back on again to go on the rocks. So it was about knowing when to put your shoes on and when to take your shoes off. So Moses did it because he was walking on very holy ground. And why do you think God chose to speak to Moses through a burning bush? I mean, it's the sort of thing that doesn't happen, isn't it? Do you remember, do you remember what we learned about last time when we looked at this story was that even though it was burning, it didn't get burned up. It was still all there. Yeah. So that was a pretty amazing thing. If you saw that happening, you'd pay attention to it, wouldn't you? And maybe that was like God's idea. Well, I'll do this and Moses will pay attention to me. And Moses will see how brilliant I am and how anything is possible with me. But even though God was doing that, how did Moses react to being asked by God to go and do that special thing for him? Didn't want to do it, did he? No, he tried to get out of it. Kept coming up with ways of why he wasn't good enough and what was God's answer. I'll be with you so you'll be good enough because you'll have me on your side because you know if a god who can like set fire to a bush and it doesn't burn up the god who can create everything is going to be on your side well that's pretty like that's having the best person ever on your side isn't it shall we read some of the verses yeah let's read some together so we're reading from the book of exodus 
and it's chapter 3, verses 11 to 14. But Moses said to God, I am not a great man. Why should I be the one to go to the king and lead the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you. This will be the proof that I am sending you. You will lead the people out of Egypt. Then all of you will worship me on this mountain. Moses said to God, when I go to the Israelites, I will say to them, the God of your ancestors sent me to you. What if the people say, what is his name? What should I tell them? Then God said to Moses, I am who I am. When you go to the people of Israel, tell them, I am sent me to you. So what was all this I am stuff? My name is I am. You don't get it. No, well, I am isn't really a name, is it? Except for Will, I am. No, no, but his whole name is Will. I, his name's William. Never mind. I'll tell you what it's about. Yeah. At the time, remember the people were, were living in Egypt, weren't they? Now, the Egyptians, they had lots of different gods, loads of them. And they, they, they all looked a bit different and some of them looked a little bit weird. Oh, let's have a look at them, uh, a couple of them now. So, so this one is called Osiris. Um, and this one, this one is a lady one. This is called Isis. And then there's this one called Anubis. But there were loads. And so Moses knew that when he went back to, to Egypt to tell the people that, that God was going to help them uh, get out of being slaves, they were going to ask, well, which God? Which God are we talking about? And God was saying, well, no, no, I'm, I'm not like one of the Egyptian gods because... Well, they don't exist. I'm the only one. It's just me. I just, I just am. I am God. And that's kind of where it came from. So luckily, Moses did go back and speak to Pharaoh and speak to the Hebrew people. And eventually, you'll remember the story, eventually the people got out of Egypt and off they went with Moses leading them. Now, God called Moses, didn't he, in a pretty spectacular way, yeah? And there was the burning bush incident, but God continued to do lots of amazing things, didn't he? He parted the sea for them to get through. Do you remember that story when they were being chased? He parted the sea, yeah. And God carries on calling people to do things for him today. He's always done it, all the way through history, he's called people. So, he calls people to be like, you know, leaders in the church, vicars, ministers, salvation army officers. Yeah, we need those to lead the church. And then he calls people to do different jobs in the church. Like he calls some people to, to do Sunday school. Oh, that'll be me. Um, and he calls people to work with people who aren't very well. So doctors and nurses and other people that work in hospitals. He calls people to look after people that haven't got very much. People who work with homeless people. Uh, people who, who have uh, problems just looking after houses and, and paying their bills. He calls people to help them with that. Um, he calls people sometimes and gives them talents to do things like singing and playing instruments and he calls them to make people happy all sorts of ways that God calls us and sometimes sometimes it can seem a little bit scary that when God calls you to do something you can think to yourself oh that sounds a scary thing to do like God is calling me to go and talk to that person over there who's new in school and and I don't know them and I feel a bit embarrassed but do you remember if God can help Moses go and tell a king to let some slaves go, then God can help us do what he's calling us to do, can't he? Yeah? Let's do a little craft. Should we do a craft to help us to remember this story? Right, you and I need to go over there to the table to do the craft. You come with us. Hold on a minute. Right, so I'm sitting down. Time for a craft. We're going to make this. 
Now, you, can you see? It says at the top, anything with God, because I can do anything with God, can't I? That's what Moses learned. God was with him and he was able to do really, really brave things. And then at the bottom, it's got the bush with the flames. And if you pop that in a window and the light shines through it, then you'll be able to, to see all the colours of the flames. Really easy to do. You need a plastic cap. You need some tissue paper. Now you need three colours. You need some red tissue paper. You need some orange tissue paper. And you need some yellow tissue paper. Now what you've got to do is you've got to cut out some shapes from the tissue paper that look like flames. Now, there's no template for this because if you ever noticed when you look at flames and the way they kind of dance around, they're all different shapes and all different sizes and things. So it doesn't matter what they look like when you cut them out, but it's going to be something a bit like that, isn't it? A flame. The only thing you do need to know is that the biggest flames, the tallest flames, need to be the yellow ones. OK, the ones, the middle size ones are the orange ones and then the red ones are the smallest ones. And when you're sticking them inside the cup, stick the red ones on first. OK, so you stick them down at the bottom. Then you stick the orange ones on and they're going to come up a little bit higher than the red ones. And then you stick the yellow ones on right at the back and they're going to come up the highest. So can you see with that? Yeah. The red ones are the shortest ones, the orange ones are the middle ones, and then the yellow ones are the tallest ones. And then you want to take a pen. Now, you want a permanent marker. You don't want one that's going to rub off easily. Otherwise, you'll pick it up, go to show somebody, and the, the tree will have gone and it'll be over your hands. OK, so you don't want that. If you want a permanent marker, but if you're using a permanent marker, you have to be careful, okay? You don't want to get it anywhere except on the cup. Not on the furniture, not on yourself, just on the cup, okay? And you draw the picture of the bush. And then, do you know what? I wrote anything with God because when I was thinking about the story of Moses and what he was able to do because God was with him, that was the idea I had. I can do anything with God. But you might you might get something else from that story. You might want to put God is amazing on there or you might want to put be brave on there. OK, so you put what you think God is telling you that you need to remember about the story. And then, like I said, put it in a window so it's got a lovely light behind it. Um, and then that'll look all lovely. The one thing that you don't want to do, this is not a pot to put a candle in because it's plastic and the paper will catch fire as well. All right. You can get those little pretend camera, uh, candles that are battery ones, can't you? So it's not a real flame. And you could pop one of those in there if you wanted to. But I think it's quite nice. Put it on my bedroom windowsill and then all the light will come through it. So that's our craft for today. OK, right, we're going to do a prayer now. Um, and the prayer is one where I want you to join in with me. All right. So I'm going to read some words of the prayer and then I want you to join in with me with these particular words. And the words are God is always with us. Do you think you can do that? As I go through the prayer, every time I say God is always with us. I want you to say that with me. OK, shall we pray then? Wherever we are, every hour of the day, whether we're at work or busy at play, God is always with us. When we're feeling happy or perhaps a bit sad during the good times, and the bad, God is always with us. At school or at home, with our friends or when we're on our own, God is always with us. Morning, noon and night, every single day, weekdays, special days, 
high days and holidays, God is always with us. Thank you, God, that you never leave us. Amen. Amen. So, don't forget that story, the amazing story of the burning bush. And remember, Moses took his shoes off because it was such a special moment. He wanted to show God how holy he thought that moment was. But we need to remember that no matter what God calls us to do in life, no matter what God says to us, I think you'd be really good doing this. If we're scared about doing it, God's going to be with us. That awesome God that did that thing with Moses. You just remember that. There are worksheets for you to do coming up on the screen now. Things to do on your own. Extra things to do with your family or with other people. And then next week, we are going to look at the life of someone else that had a really amazing encounter with God. So you come back here. I won't be down the caravan. I'll be back at home, back with the cats. And we'll see what amazing things we've got to read in the Bible next week. See you. Bye. <laughs>